Hi, this is Ivan and welcome to the channel. Today, what I'd like to do is give a brief initial impression on the Lightspeed Delta Zulu headset for general aviation. Very specifically, what I'd like to do is kind of compare them to the Zulu 3 is also by Lightspeed. I think there's a large number of pilots out there who are considering upgrading, and I'd like to discuss the pros and cons and my just, again, an, an initial impression here on the ground. I plan on doing a follow-up video where I, I kind of do a, a, a test up in the air and how they sound in an actual uh, flying environment. But for today, we're going to discuss just the features and how they do um, here on the ground. I have done some testing with these. Uh, I have a, a USB adapter specifically for general aviation headsets, the FSX Dual that I use for my flight simulator. And that's been very awesome in helping me kind of test and do some comparisons here in my studio. So let me go ahead and show you what we're talking about here. And so right off the bat, just looking at the form factor, it's very similar. Clearly there's some color differences uh, with this kind of uh, bronze kind of color here, but the headsets are almost identical in terms of, of the form factor. Uh, very similar weight. In fact, there's only a 0.3 ounce difference, which is more of a difference on paper than actual practice. I, I myself cannot tell the difference when I'm wearing them, which one is heavier. Um, very similar in terms of the mics seem the same. The boom mics are the same. The material that they're made of is the same, very durable. I've owned these Zulu 3s for about two years, a little over two years, and I've really... Uh, Enjoyed them. They sound great. Uh, their noise reduction, noise canceling is, is top notch. And certainly compared to headsets without noise canceling, they are amazing. Uh, again, very similar in terms of, of form factor with a difference. One big difference being the actual battery compartment. You can see here that the both of the cords come from the top. I typically fly in a 172. And this is nice. I can just drop it in the pocket, and that's pretty, pretty nice compared to the Zulu 3s, which, as you recall, come out of the top and the bottom, which is really no big deal. You just do like that and drop it in, and it's and it and it works. It's it's never been an issue. They both have this amazing uh, Kevlar cord, which I, in a former lifetime, was a uh, owned a recording studio. And my goodness, I wish all cables were made like this. It's kind of freaky the way they, they just, it's very hard to get them tangled up. They're very durable. Uh, the whole headset is very durable, to be honest with you. These Zulu 3s, I've just stuffed in my flight bag. There's no other protection. I have a, a mount for my iPad that rubs up against it all the time. I don't, they, they barely have a mark on them. And they've really held up well. I'm not very gentle on these headsets. And so I, I, my expectation is, given that the materials are the same and the, and the craftsmanship looks very similar, I feel like this is going to last just as well. Um, time will tell on that. So that's pretty much those features. In terms of other specs, they are identical in terms of frequency response. Um, the microphones, If I, looking at the spec sheets on the website, the rest of that is, is essentially identical. Now, battery life is going to be different. And now I'm going to kind of wait to see how that works. I have gotten really good battery life on my Zelta, on my um, uh, Zulu 3s. Um, I No complaints there. We will see what the battery life on this is like. Um, this is a rechargeable unit, which is different from the Zulu 3s. That's batteries. And then, of course, it comes with a little uh, additional adapter that you can put in regular batteries if you to have backup. So we'll kind of see what that, how that goes. So what I'd also like to do is now talk a little bit about the app that comes with this. And I think that's going to be a big uh, feature and, and not just the app, but the, the, the feature that comes along with the app, that the apps control. So let's, let's bring that up. And what I'm going to do here is I've got the, the app up here and, you can see on the screen, and you can also see that the Delta Zulu is connected. Um, if I were to turn this off and turn it back on, it would say not connected and then reconnected. So right off the bat, it's showing the carbon monoxide detector. And so that's going to be, that's a big feature. That's something they really promoted when they were advertising in their, their ad campaign for these headsets as a safety feature. 
And we'll come back to that, but I, I, that's going to be an important consideration when when we when I make recommendation on who should upgrade to this and maybe who could consider waiting for a little bit. The second thing, which actually I was more interested in, is the uh, hearing acuity. What this does, it's very interesting. This applies a um, EQ curve based off of a self-administered hearing test that you give utilizing the app. We'll kind of run through it real quickly. But let's say, for example, you you have a hearing deficit of 1,000 kilohertz. And so what this will do is this will boost that frequency so you can hear things uh, uh, more clearly. At least that's the stated claim. And my initial testing, I believe that claim to be, to be essentially accurate. And we'll go through the setup very quickly. So it's an interesting idea. And given the loud environment, and the fact that a significant number of pilots are, I'm just going to say over 40, that, you know, the hearing deficits are probably more commonplace uh, than we think. Um, and so we'll kind of, we'll kind of discuss that. Well, let's go back here. Okay, let's talk about how to actually set this up. And what I'll do is we'll go through this component of the app again real quick. Uh, just briefly though, help at the top, you can see where it says hearing acuity, and then you can see where it says manage presets. If you click on the manage presets, it gives a number of built in, like that's flat. That gives a bass boost. That gives a treble boost, a mid boost. This is saying for voice, this is their interpretation of what would be a good one for voice. And so you can add your own preset, but we're going to go to the hearing acuity and we're going to do a setup. So what we're going to do is hit setup. And very briefly, the way, I, at least historically, the, the hearing tests that I've taken have been is that you are you sit in front of an audiologist, you're in a booth, you've got some headsets on, you've got a, a, a button. And basically, they will bring a tone from a very low volume. And as the tone comes up, once you're able to hear the tone, you, you press the button and then that is recorded um, how loud, how many decibels that tone was when you are able to hear it. And that is how, at least in, again, in my experience of taking hearing tests, that is what I have experienced. And so this is a little bit different. So what this does is you start out with the, hearing the tone and then you're going to adjust from there. And I'll show you what I mean here. So we'll hit set up now. And it kind of gives you some guidance on how to adjust for your environment, basically indicating you want to be in a quiet room, which makes sense. And you want your headset to be unplugged from anything. So it shouldn't be plugged into anything. And then you're going to turn your phone, your device all the way up. And, it, and this gives you guidance for all this on the screen. So you don't really have to worry about remembering what to do. Hit next. And then it gives you the option to start. And it's going to go through 12 tones, one on each side of, of a left and a right. And then we'll, we'll kind of demonstrate that. So it starts on the left side at 125 hertz. And it, it would be playing a tone. And if you can hear the tone, then what you're going to do is you're going to turn this slider down until the sound goes away. That's if you can hear the tone. If it starts out in the middle and you can't hear the tone, then you're going to turn this up to just past the point of hearing the tone and then bring it down till you can barely hear it. Basically what it wants you to do is adjust the volume until you barely hear the tone. And it wants you to do that for you know a given number of um, frequencies. So we'll just kind of run through this. This is just random. Um, I it, These are easy to repeat. So I'm just gonna kinda, and you may be hearing some of this go through. I'm just gonna randomly move this slider around thousand hertz 1500 hertz um, 2000 hertz or two kilohertz depending on how you want to say that and 3000 4000 6000 and right around here it really starts to get very high pitched and it's a little bit painful and now it's going to go to the right side and basically what you're going to do is you're going to repeat the same process but now you're going to do it on the right side and again what you're doing is you you have the slider in the middle if you can hear the tone, you're going to turn it down till you can just barely hear it, which may mean that you go to the point where you can't hear it and then back it up a little bit. Um, or if you start out in the middle 
and you can't hear the tone, you're going to turn it up until you can just barely hear it. And then that's going to be your, where you leave it. So let's go back. And I'm just going to, again, just you would run through this. I'm going through this much more quickly than if I were actually taking the test. And 4,000. And then what it's going to do is it's going to give you an option to test this. And you can kind of see uh, the curve that is initially generated. And you see this toggle for um, hearing acuity. And what you can do is it says play test sound. I'm not going to do that because it's kind of loud. It's a very brief clip of a piece of classical music. And then what you would do is you could play that classical music without the EQ curve. And then you can play it with the EQ curve. And if you think it's a, um, if you think the EQ'd uh, with hearing acuity uh, version sounds better, then you're good to go. You can just kind of stop with that. If you don't like it or you don't think it sounds as good, you can try to repeat it. But basically, this is where you would test that. Now, let's assume that you, you're, you're pleased with the results. What you're going to do is you're going to hit done. And you can see the EQ curve that it's applying. Again, that was just random. That's not what my EQ curve would look like. And you can always test that. You can hit test and it takes you back to that same thing. But that's what your EQ curve. So in this particular one, on the right side, it's boosting frequencies that it thinks that I have deficits in. And it's, you know, and it's 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 definitely interesting. And that is basically how the uh, the hearing acuity part works. And I will say that for me, the difference with and without was was pleasant. It wasn't drastic. My hearing's actually pretty good, but it made a difference. And I'll I, I can't wait to see if it's going to make a difference up in the air. But it definitely makes a difference here on the ground. So for me, that was actually more interesting than the carbon monoxide component. And I'll tell you why um, as I kind of switch into who, who needs this? Who are the Delta Zulus for and who needs to upgrade? So I'm going to try not to do the who should do it. And then it's, well, it depends on the person and not really give you an answer. It does depend on the person, but I think there's some concrete scenarios where you could say, yes, I would like, I would recommend it, at least for me, or, or no, I don't recommend it. And the first scenario is, and I think this is a pretty common scenario, for those of you who are using ForeFlight and you have a ForeFlight Sentry, the two models with the carbon monoxide detector, I, and your hearing is basically intact, then I'm not sure that the Delta Zulus are necessary. I guess you could, in, in that particular case, you could say, well, it'd be nice to have a set that I could go fly with somebody else or, or maybe I'm not taking my, uh, my Sentry, in which case I'll always have a carbon monoxide uh, detector with me. But if that's not the case, then, you know, the, the money is significant and you may not want to upgrade. Um, so that's my definitely, I don't think I would upgrade. I would just get, you know, if I if I was looking for a second set of headsets for, say, a passenger or something, I would probably just get another set of Zulu 3s because that would give me a backup as well. What about those who don't have any kind of carbon monoxide detector? Well, I think in that case, I think that this is a brilliant device. Um, the audio cues are, are completely, you can hear them. It tells you what's going on. And I think that's a safety factor that just cannot be beat. Um, I'm an emergency room nurse practitioner. I'm here to tell you that carbon monoxide is deadly and I've seen it firsthand and it's awful. But um, so that kind of uh, safety feature, I think, is is totally worth the extra money. Now, I also have a, um, a four flight sentry. So for me, this is a little bit redundant, but I do occasionally fly with other people. And I like the idea of having this with me just in case. Um, what about those who, who do have hearing issues, which maybe you have identified that already, or maybe you're, you suspect, but you're not sure. I think that they're worthwhile to try out. Go through it. 
do the setup. I believe Lightspeed, Sporties, I believe all the big uh, retailers have an option that you can return a headset within a certain amount of time with no questions asked. And I think if you suspect that you have a hearing deficit um, or where you would like to maybe just get a little more clarity, I think that these headsets would probably be worth it. Um, at least my testing here on the ground. And again, I'm using a um, USB adapter and it's been very pleasant. And I can I can have a controlled environment and I'm able, I've been able to test it. It sounds like it would make a, a difference. It's not that big a difference for me, but again, my hearing, my curve is relatively flat, but some of you may have some significant deficits. Um, those of you who have been around firearms, those of you who have been in aviation much longer than me, uh, maybe there's some EMS folks out there who are around a lot of decibels with a lot of impact. And over time, that repeated injury to a certain frequency, you know, maybe if you could just boost that one frequency a little bit, maybe that's the difference between understanding an ATC, uh, you know, direction or not. So I think for those who are um, suspecting of, of having a hearing deficit, that would be a good thing for. Adding a second set for passengers, if that's all you're looking for, I don't think that these are the headsets to do. I mean, um, like in my case, I'll wear the Delta Zulus and have my Zulu 3s as backup. Um, I may also gift these uh, to my son if he, he's thinking about becoming a pilot. We'll see how that goes. But in any case, I don't, if just a second set, no, I, I don't think I would do that. But they are, again, they are a wonderful set. I, I, I think this is some quality craftsmanship. What I also, again, what I plan on doing is a, um, a follow-up video on how these sound um, up in the air in a, in a loud environment. But I, I, I'm pretty sure that it's going to be worthwhile. Um, for me, anyway, I also like testing new gear. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, if, I'm, if I can answer them, I certainly will. Just leave them in the comments below. You guys have a great day.